Hey guys, this is Liam Hill. I'm an animator based in Sydney, Australia, and uh, I'm the creator of Liam's Animation Tools. So this is just a super quick video to give you the rundown of version 2, uh, show you the new features and the new look, and just help you decide if uh, you'd find it useful. So across the board, um, with all the tools in Liam's Animation Tools, um, I've focused on usability and ease of use. Um, so you'll notice straight away it, it looks different, it's a lot cleaner and neater. And in addition to just the look of it, uh, every script now has uh, what I call automatic defaults, meaning you can just dive straight in by clicking a button. So no matter what tool it is, um, you don't need to adjust a thousand settings before it will work. Uh, you can if you want to, the options are all still there. Uh, however, I felt it was important to just be able to just straight away get going um, and worry about those settings afterwards. So I'll just give you a quick uh, look at each of the scripts. Um, so there's Pint Parent, uh, Strobe Simulator, um, Auto Orient, and uh, Step Key. So they're all there, same, same set of tools, um, but largely rewritten and a lot easier to use this time around. Uh, the biggest change functionality wise comes with uh, Sprite Swapper. So I've added in what I've called the Sprite Swapper library. Uh, this icon here, uh, open that up and you'll see this new window come up. Um, and inside this window we have two columns. Uh, the left column will display all of the swappers that you've created. Um, actually, if you're unfamiliar with the first version of Sprite Swapper, what it does is create controllers that let you swap between frames or layers of compositions. Uh, so if you have a character, um, like this guy here, and you need a blink shape for his eyes and an open shape for his mouth, things like that, um, or anything you can think of really, what it does basically is switch between the visibility of layers or frames, depending on how you would like to create it. So that was the old version. Um, of course, once you created the swappers, you need to go into the sliders and play with them and animate them. And it could get a little confusing if you had a very complicated uh, character or scene set up. So what this library does is take every swapper you've made in every composition of the project and just put them in a big list here, which you can then filter down using the name of the composition layer or the slider itself. Um, to make things easier. So once you click on a swapper, you get the list of the sprites that you've created. Um, clicking on one of these sprites, so this notification has just told us that the composition isn't active, meaning it's not actually sure where to place the keyframe. So let's just make sure this little guy is selected. So if we click on a low brow, can see it's changed over there. Uh, normal, crooked, frown. So this is actually creating a keyframe. Um, something a bit more obvious, the mouth, we've got happy, neutral, and content. So at the moment it's on content, neutral, uh, happy. So it really is very, very helpful when your project is becoming complicated. Um, and you can just do all of this animating from just one single place. Um, it helps a lot. Uh, you'll notice the eyes here have a different icon to these guys. That's just simply because with Sprite Swapper, you can have it control multiple groups of sprites. So the one swapper will affect multiple things, basically. Um, so a good example is the eyes, where one swapper actually controls the left and the right eye. So they've both got their own shapes, which happen to be the same but they're in separate compositions. Um, so up here at this drop down, you can see eyeball left, that's the list of sprites inside eyeball left. And eyeball right, we've got the same list. Um, however, they are technically different. So that's the biggest difference functionality wise. And I think a lot of people would find this very useful um, as I have. So definitely check this out if you think it's something 
that would speed up your workflow um, or just help you generally. So moving on, uh, pin to parent um, will create null objects where puppet pins are on a mesh. So it works across if you've got multiple meshes on a single layer as well. Um, you can select individual pins and just create a null controller for those or it will work on every pin on the layer if you don't specify. Um, so those familiar with the old version can see the interface is much different. Um, it's a lot easier to choose a color. You can cycle through up here or just choose it down here. Um, slider for the size of the null, uh, which you can also type in a number there. Um, naming can be automatic or custom. and. Uh, these numbers up here just reflect the different settings that you've got down here. So A for automatic naming, uh, 87 for the size and the color. So you can uh, cram the UI right up like that so it's out of the way and still uh, use it easily. So moving on to strobe simulator. Uh, what this does is it takes a animation curve or a bunch of animation curves depending on uh, what you choose and it will uh, create controllers which allow you to stutter the animation. So it will create a controller for turning it on and off and a controller for the actual amount that, at which it stutters. So those are both animatable and uh, you can choose where to place them in your composition um, so you can link them together to, exi uh, to existing ones uh, or not. Um, you can choose the properties up here uh, automatically, it just does the basic transforms. Um, the range, of course, because it makes um, a checkbox control to turn it off and on, you can define that later or you can do it automatically by selecting one of these. Um, you can set the initial interval, but obviously that can be animated later and all sorts of crazy effects. So just to give you uh, a quick example, let's Let's just animate the right shoulder rotating, start it up there. Sorry, just ignore the face, that's just keyframes that I was putting on with the sprite swapper earlier. So we've got the shoulder rotating, if we were to apply uh, strobar with an interval of six frames uh, automatic placement of the range and the interval effects which means they'll be placed in this composition just at the top uh, you'll see in a second hit create so we have new strobe control panel up the top um, there'll be two effects the new range control which is on and off and the interval control which is the amount which we've set to six as you can see here so let's just turn it on. And you can see it's stuttering the animation there. So if we turn it off halfway, you can see it's smooth there and stutters there. Okay, so let's just undo that. Uh, moving on. We have auto orient, so a lot simpler in the UI. Um, what this does is lets you quickly orient something to a particular direction and constrain it there, or constrain to a point, uh, meaning a layer. So you can choose a layer that's in your composition from this drop down, or just setting it to new null will just automatically create uh, a null at which this will point. So let's try the left shoulder and constrain to a new point. So it's made this point here, um, shoulder left control point constraint, you can see just there. So as we drag this around, you can see the uh, shoulder is aiming at that. So if we were also to move a parent of the shoulder, so let's go torso. that arm will still point straight to that. Okay, so lastly we have step key. Uh, what step key does is it takes an animation curve or a bunch of curves 
and converts them to a series of stepped or hold keyframes. So this is really great if you want to uh, block out a scene and you have a very clear idea of uh, maybe the path that something is traveling along where you might uh, utilize a um, ease in effect to get a nice curve but then you want to take that curve back to a blocking stage um, and do more things over the top of that. So just to show you how it works, um, let's do it with this point constraint we made just before. Uh, let's animate it going just up like that. Maybe give a little bit of a S curve in there. So that's the path we want it to follow. Um, but now we want to take that back to a more a simpler curve or to a blocking stage um, to do more animation over the top. You just come up here, let's set it to 4 so it's really obvious. Hit convert. And there we have it. Um, so you can also set the range. You can do only a section of the curve. So let's say just the work area. and only the position so it's only going to do between that section and the rest of the curve is intact so that's basically it um, in case you wanted to see pin to parent in action it basically does this with puppet pins um, and lets you parent these together. Um, if you want to see that more in depth, check out the individual videos I've created for each of these. Um, as I said earlier, this is just a quick sort of run through. Didn't want this to go for too long. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, so hopefully you can find some use in these tools. Um, check it out. I think seven day free trial um, and if you want to keep using it obviously you can get it from aescripts.com and uh, yeah thanks for watching guys